Hi, this is Josh of Leadworks, and today's lesson is going to be an introduction to bodies. Now, bodies are shapes that we use for physics, and they can be a lot of fun. I already have a program template created here, and if you're unsure of what any of this does, then I recommend you take a look at some of our earlier tutorials. And I'm going to jump right in and create a body. I'm going to create a box body and I'm going to set the mass to 1. Now when a, a body is first created it has zero mass and when, a phys when the physics simulator sees a body with mass of zero it assumes that the mass is supposed to be infinite. So that means that it won't move, it won't be affected by gravity and if something runs into it uh, it won't move. Um, so use use mass of zero for things that should be collidable but shouldn't move, like your scene. Okay, now bodies are just invisible shapes, so we won't actually be able to see anything how it is now. But I'm going to say debug physics one, and that will turn on the physics debugger, and I'll show you what that does. So let's run the program. Oh, and I'm just going to change this to 640 by 480. And there goes our box body. Okay, so a box falling isn't terribly excited, exciting, so I'm going to create another body for it to collide with. And I'm going to call that the ground. And I'm going to pass some parameters in for the width, height, and length. And I'm not going to set the, the mass for this because I want it to have infinite mass. But I am going to reposition it a little bit. So it's not inside the other box and let's see what happens when we run this. Oh no. So our box just passed right through the ground and that's not going to change until we enable collisions. And what we're going to do is we're going to say entity type body is 1 and the collision type of the ground is one as well. And then we're going to say collisions when an entity of type one hits another entity of type one, then a collision should result. We could say, uh, you know, we could set it up so that entities of type two collide with entities of type one, but don't collide with entities of type three but we're just going to keep it simple. And let's see what happens when we run this. Okay, much better. Now you'll notice when the box came to rest it turned red. And red objects are, that means that they're at rest and they're inactive, and green objects are active. You can have lots and lots of inactive objects and it won't slow the physics down at all, but if you have too many green active objects then uh, it can start to slow the physics down, especially if they're all in one big pile. Okay, now we're going to make it a little bit more interesting. I want to create a second box, and I'll call that body 2. and I do want this one to have mass and I'm going to reposition it so it's not inside the first box and I'll position it that, that at one half and too high and at the same Z position 
and I'll set the entity type down here with the others. Okay, let's see what happens when we run that. Okay, it's getting better. Then we're still looking at it in wireframe, so first I want to get rid of this debug physics line. And what we want to do next is add some visible meshes. We'll do that up here. We'll say mesh equals create cube and then we're going to parent the mesh to the body. And when we parent a child entity, here the mesh, to a parent, the body, uh, then when the body moves and rotates, the mesh will move and rotate with it. And the mesh, the child will maintain its relative position and rotation um, relative to the bot to the uh, parent. And we're just going to copy that, and we'll do the same thing down here to body two. And you'll notice. Well, first I'm going to call it mesh two. Okay. And I did this before the second body is positioned. And the reason I did that is because we want it to maintain its relative position at zero when the body is still at zero. And it's probably easier for me to just show you this. Let's run it right now. Remember we haven't done the ground yet, so we can't see the ground, but we can see the two meshes. Okay, that looks alright. What happens if we do this, add this, what happens if we parent the mesh to the body after the body is positioned? And I'm going to turn debug physics back on so you can see. Oh no, there's the body on the right, and the mesh is moving with it, but it's got this offset, and it's doing exactly what we told it to. Um, it's maintaining because when it at the time it was parented, the mesh was at zero zero zero, and the body was at uh, what like zero point five two zero. So it is maintaining its position relative to the body, but that's not what we want. So I'm going to get rid of the debug physics command, and I'm going to move this back where we had it before, and we just need to add a ground mesh. And I'm going to scale the ground mesh entity. And I'm going to give it the same dimensions as the body. And then parent the ground mesh to the ground body. And remember, we're positioning the ground body. So we want to move this. back before the positioning command. Okay. Alright, so although we're just looking at these plain white surfaces, uh, we can see that we're actually looking at uh, something that we can apply a uh, texture and lighting to instead of just looking at these wireframe outlines.